Yes. Okay, so, um, sir, we continued this last month to give you some time to uh, do some more homework, so to speak. Um, what have you got for us? Well, I, oh, excuse me, sorry. So I did, I was in contact with, I'm pronouncing the name wrong, San, or Shane, S-E-N-N, -N, excavating out of Montague. I don't know if you folks are familiar, they do installs of septic um, systems as well as grading. I had reached out to North Hadley or North River Excavating in Hadley. A fella came by, but I was never able to get the paperwork. He never sent it. So, uh, but I do have a letter from uh, James Sean. Right? I know I didn't upload it. I can email it to whomever would like, um, which states, on January 30th, I met with Mr. Pekarski to discuss his concerns and options pertaining to the existing carport on his property. He expressed that the carport may have to be relocated from its current position. Mr. Pekarski inquired about how the relocation of the carport could potentially affect the integrity of the property and the existing septic system for this lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. If the carport is moved to the proposed location, it could very well have a negative effect on the septic system for this property. Due to the natural grade of the land, the runoff of, of the carport in the proposed location, which was, as to your point, Mr. Lipton, was turning it, spinning it directly behind the uh, existing garage, um, proposed location would likely flood the septic system and cause the system to fail. In order to control the water runoff from the relocated carport, the entire lot would need to be completely reconfigured and graded in a way to attempt to guide the water away from the septic system. Due to the natural shape of the property, regrading may not completely alleviate the drainage issue and could still have a potential, excuse me, and could still have potential to flood and fail the septic system. If reshaping of the property failed, it could be detrimental to the integrity of the current septic system. In conclusion, I would not recommend relocating the carport to the pro proposed location, if at all possible. And then James, I believe the pronunciation is Shane Seen. Excuse me, could, could you just spell that for me so I could make a note of it? Oh, certainly. Um, his name. His name is James. J A M E S, last name, capital S E N N. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. What's what's the name of what business is he into? He is in excavating, um, excavating. septic design install. Um, he's out of Montague, Mass. How about any measurements? Do you take any measurements for instance, to those pine trees? Uh, yes, I did. And let's see. The pine trees I'm talking would are, I'm sorry, I don't have them, are from the garage about 85 feet. So if I were to spin it, those pine trees would not really be an issue. I, you know, more so, I didn't express clearly. If I were to put it further back, they would be an issue. So the pine trees... Um, I will say are not an issue if it were to be spun as we, you know, you had discussed, Mr. Lipton. All right, well then, <clears throat> let's put aside the spinning notion for a moment. Mm -hmm. The, um, did you do a, a map or a or, or sketch? I did, a, yes. I, uh, another one of bringing the carport, I believe Mr. Orlowski had mentioned bringing it up flush with the garage. Oh. Um, yeah. which still, oh, and I'm sorry, I did not this submit is the, the one we have from, this is the la uh, last one we had. Okay. Um, I apologize. I did not submit, but what I can discuss with this is, so if I brought the carport to flush with the front of the garage, um, I would still be about eight feet over the 20 foot setback. 
and that would also put the, the pitch of the roof, it's, um, it's like an A-frame roof. So then the roof would be going right towards the existing garage, which is pitched the other way, if I'm being clear. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble, frankly. <laughs> right. uh, is that shown on your new diagram? Uh, not the roof pitch. No, it is not. So, so given those trees being 85 feet back, mm -hmm. um, is there any opportunity to move <clears throat> the carport further back deeper into the lot, keeping it away from the sideline, away from those trees and away from the septic system? That's the question. The, and to answer that, I do not have that in writing. That was discussed. And that would also entail um, more regrading as there is a natural swale. I don't know if you folks can see this, if I put the picture up, I know this isn't great. Um, but let's see, this is the carport correct, currently. And you can see the pathway that leads through the woods is like a natural swale and the area here is about a three foot differential. So the backyard actually slopes uphill, um, which is why water does somewhat come towards the house, but it's like plateaued and then it runs over towards um, the uh, right away between Mr. Smith's house and mine. Now this would all be, I'm imagining harder to see with the foot of snow that we got. Um, you, yes, um, if you would like to come and see it, I have no issue of snow blowing the yard. Um, really there's been nothing added. So the snow contours to the land. Um, but if you folks would like, I have no problem doing that to show you. I know I'm not describing it correctly and it's a little hard. If I could show you the picture, it might be different. Well, you're doing a decent job. It's just, it's a hard task, that's the thing. Um, yes. Yes, and appreciate everyone's patience because we all know it's, it is tough. You know, we're at least in a meeting, I could pass it around and right. show everybody and be a little clearer. I have a question on the, mm -hmm. the septic system. You mentioned it's, it's quite old. Did you yeah. ever have a, a Title V inspection done when you moved in or bought the property? I did, Mr. Olaf, yes. And obviously in Mass, as you guys, you know, when you change hands, it did right. pass. It did. It did pass. Correct. Yes. Um, it did pass, and that was in 2015. Um, since then, I've had it pumped and okay. have seen no issues. Okay. Well, it's good. I guess good to hear that. No, correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. One other, uh, I guess, comment I have is your, your, you're proposing to be what three feet away from the property line. Correct. There's another. There's another uh, uh, parcel uh, property. Well, I guess on the north side of you, uh, that is a building lot. Uh, and you're by you being, you're going to be three feet close to their property line, and their offset is going to be what twenty feet from the property line. Uh, I don't know if I was that property owner or if I was looking to buy that parcel and I saw something that close to my property line. I don't know whether that would uh, impact the, the future use of that parcel or not. Fred, how many feet did you say? Well, it's three, he's saying three feet from the property line is the proposed uh, garage or structure here. Correct. I, I guess, I think we got to be aware of what you're doing to adjacent property owners. Correct. No, you're not on their property, but I guess there was a reason why we had the 20 feet setback. Well, that's exactly right. That's the reason for the bylaw. All right. 
I mean, otherwise it could be arbitrary, I guess, if, if we didn't have a, a definite number there. And, uh, Well, my feeling is what Fred's suggestion last time for a detailed, more detailed plan was a, a good one, mm -hmm. but it really only would have helped us if we had it in hand. Um, so we don't have it in hand, but you offered to submit it together with that send letter. Um, I think ultimately I'm gonna still wanna see the property to view it Mm -hmm. So it's a question of timing. <clears throat> Should we see these written materials first before we schedule a meeting? And what about the snow? What do you think, Fred? Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah. Sure. The, the, the people who are uh, abutting on the property line that is close to, are they in this meeting? No. The, uh, no. Are those the people who wrote the letter uh, at the first at the first meeting? Uh, we had a letter that someone had written about for you, Walter. Yes. Well, right. we, we had some supporters, but the north side is owned by um, Sanders Sanders. Brothers. Sanders. 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 Correct. Right. So we haven't heard from them, but they're not. They're not opposing it. So that's you know they know how to oppose it if they wanted to and this might not help it was a word of mouth i did approach them and there seemed to be no issue and they knew about this um uh, actually the first meeting we had so okay could you explain again i it may have been in in your original submittal or, or earlier documents uh if you move the carport to the other side of the property, mm -hmm. uh, other side of the house, what what is going to be your your, I guess, cost to do that? You're saying it's it's expensive to do that. Could you correct? Find us uh, again what what that would be. Uh, yes, if you bear with me, Mr. Olaski, I will find. I had um, Helstowski Tree and Landscape come to give uh, me an estimate for the left side. Um, uh, that area. Um, Cut and dry would be about 9,250. The reason being there's a lot of um, grades that are, I did not show. I do apologize. To, I did not add the topography of the, the land. It's amazing what the topography is of this little parcel. And I think that's what drew me to it, to buy it. But um, we're speaking of the left side of the house, meaning a budding the uh, Smith parcel. And that's where the estimate from Helstowski tree and landscape, that's the one that I originally had submitted. <clears throat> and that was for a driveway that would come out directly to Long Plain Road? Uh, with gravel, yes. Okay. So what what is your, getting back to your, where you have it now, mm -hmm. what is the driveway there? That's gravel, it comes out to your driveway or does it come out direct to Long Plain Road? The gravel comes to my driveway. Um, if you look at the front, there was a garage in a little turnaround. There's just gravel right to that turnaround. It does not go to Long Plain Road. Okay. So you want to do a site visit, Roger? I do, but then the question is, should we see his material first? And what about the snow? Do we, <laughs> the choices are let him snow blow it or maybe just wait till we get some warmer weather, but it's only February 4th. That, that's not guaranteed to happen anytime well, soon. It's it's not going to be moving until we have warmer weather anyway. So maybe we just need to wait until there's no snow until we can do a site visit. 
Well, that's true. I mean, he's already got the structure there. It's not as if he's <clears throat> needing us to approve something so we can put a structure there. Um, right. And I take full responsibility. I know I didn't mention the last time how the process went. I had ordered the shed. They said they could install it. I went about a week later, looked into getting a permit. I did not hear back. I inquired, found out because I did not put the setbacks in the original permit. And then I didn't hear back about a month later. Or so I called the building inspector who mentioned this is, you know, this is what I need to do because there are these certain setbacks. So I just wanted to say that to clear it up. You know, I am in the wrong with that. And um, I just wanted to be a little more clear as to what I was trying to convey with the process that I tried to get a permit with. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I really do have no problem snow blowing the yard. I am, you know, and I don't mean to be pushy, but I uh, enjoy being physical. <laughs> Not to, you know, <laughs> it's a good stress relief. I don't know if anybody else would. <laughs> <laughs> so what what additional work will you be doing to the existing carport yes uh maybe putting doors on the front uh but nothing else uh currently i just have a tarp hanging okay so if we do grant a variance you would what, reapply for a, a building permit? I, yes, I would. To be honest, I, I do want to get a permit. I Whatever you folks say I need to do, I will. Um, I have made mistakes. I would was I misinformed myself, but that is the point of this, Mr. Orlowski, is to make right, get a permit, and I am willing to do what, it is a movable structure. If there's a concern of the property, say, you know, the Sanderson speak up in five years, maybe we can address it. I, and um, I'm willing to make right with what I did. Well, I'm just worried, even though you're offering a snowblower with that grade mm -hmm. and the variations, whether, whether you can really get down with a snowblower to to re reveal what's there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's in your interest to, to do it, to get it as low as possible. I don't mm -hmm. know about delaying it to the spring, Kristen. I mean, I suppose that's our, our alternative. We could have the view if we didn't think it was visible because of the snow, we could always reschedule the view. Um, I guess I think, I'm, I think we're kind of better off getting this getting this done while it's still fresh in our mind. Um, how soon can you get that material to Mary, our secretary? Um, I could probably fax it or email it. Emailing works better. Emailing, yeah. And if it helps, it's really, all I really did was just show on the map where the proposal, you know, like this was the one that Mr. Orlowski had brought up. Um, and then the other one. Mr. Actually, can you hold it there? Oh, it's, sorry. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Sorry about that. That's all right. All right, so that shows it flat against the garage. Correct. If the garage, the existing, uh, let me grab a pen, sorry. Yeah. So that shows, let me try to get it better for you. This is my existing garage. The, yeah. the garage door is here. And then this would be the doors of the carport. So it's, it's still encroaching on that setback area, but much less. It's Correct. Quite a bit less. I believe I would be about. So you're saying the roof will prevent you from really doing that. Correct. So, um, the let's see i'm going to try to make an example so the garage roof of my existing the roof is pitched like this yeah, yeah. and then the carport has a pitch like this as well but it runs it would run like that i'm not doing a good job but i'm just trying to explain to those 
who might not understand the roof pitch, it would basically bring the, all the water and such from the roof of the um, carport right to the wall of the garage. Mm. The peak of the roofs wouldn't match. Um, Does that, that carport have any gutters? No, it doesn't. Is that the way it's designed, no gutters? That's the way it came. Um, I'm sure could probably um, manufacture, or not, excuse me, not manufacture, but somehow put gutters on it. It's basically like a barn, you know, a yeah. small. Oh, although it is a metal roof. So, I mean, I'm sure gutters could be installed maybe, but I don't know how, you know. Let me just ask maybe an obvious question. <laughs> Why couldn't you, maybe I'll do the same thing. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. <laughs> why, why couldn't you, looking at your original plan, uh, I guess, Kristen, could you put that original, this original sketch up on yep. the board? All right. So I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. North is to the right, obviously. West is to the deeper part of the field, to the lot. I mean, why couldn't you move it? West, southwest a bit. Yeah, where her pointer is over there. Yeah, 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 there you go. Why couldn't you move it there? That's getting into those trees, Mr. Lipton, that we talked about. I thought those trees are 85 feet away. They are, but that, and, and that also impedes on the, the natural drain that I was showing you with this picture. So I see what you're saying, and that was where I was going before, or I wasn't when I was talking of the trees. That would bring this back over this area here, which is also part of that natural swale. Um, so this corner, uh, the inside corner of the, the carport facing the septic, that is this wall right here. So as you can tell, there's, uh, swale that goes to the back of the property. Yeah. So, so if I were to even kitty corner this over, which we thought of, that would, ex, you know, uh, require extensive draining as well, dra excuse me, drainage as well, which I had mentioned before, you know, I don't want to put the water where it doesn't belong onto the abutting properties. Well, it's already going on the abutting property. By the way, you've configured it. Oh, no. No. And that was one of the reasons I understand. So where I chose when in this panic mode that I was in when they said they could get it, that area um, where I installed it, I did little regrading to. There's a pile of maybe two yards of soil that I had just scraped out so I could put gravel in. The area was kind of naturally flat sloped down, if that makes any sense. So there was really no excavating at all just to bring the gravel base in. And it's deceiving the yard because as you look here, these there's a garden back here and that's where it actually slopes up. There's quite a little slope. Well, I still want, <clears throat> want to see the place. Hmm? You know, the variance standard, there's a, you know, an element of impossibility. It's impossible to put it elsewhere. And, and here I'm seeing possibilities mm -hmm. and seeing possibilities with not perfect situations or not ideal situations, but I'm not really hearing impossibility either. But I, I, um, what, oh, that should be picked up in a minute. Um, Roger, we can't hear you. All right, I'm back. I want to, I want to take a view. The question is when sh should we have the view? So do you think we should do it in February or not? Uh, 
Why not? Why not? Sure, why not? Why not? All right. How long is going how long do you need Mr. Pekarski to do the snow blowing? Uh, would sat I could get it done Saturday morning. This Saturday, meaning uh, yeah. yeah. Sixth. Cur yes, yeah, sorry, the sixth. All right. I would be I can't be there. Oh, that's fine. Okay. How about the I following Saturday? Following Saturday? I, I could probably be there the following Saturday. I know I can't be there this Saturday. Fred, the 13th? That yes, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a view on sure. Saturday, February the 13th at 10 a.m. And then, uh, Mr. Pekarski, do the emailing of those documents over to Mary before then, please. Okay. Yes. Will do. That's can I ask just one other question? Sure. If we decide that you have to move it to a different mm -hmm. location, can it be moved as, as one unit or is it going to have to be all disassembled and reassembled? Ah, uh, well, I'm, I'm feeling that it will be able to be moved as one, but um, whatever the case is, I will get it moved if that is what needs to be done, you know? Um, I really don't have a right answer for you, Mr. Olasky. I've been pondering it and looking at it. Yeah. Um, some of the boards I can pull off. I've had help from, or excuse me, offers from help from some neighbors and such. So uh, one way or the other, I'm hoping it was one piece. They're pretty structural, so it should be able to be moved as one piece. Okay. That's good to hear. Okay, thanks. Yep. Excuse right. me. I, think, I, think you, you, I was just going to give my... Uh, email to get the uh, the documents. Great. Okay. I am ready, Mrs. McCarthy. Go ahead. Okay. You could use ZBA at Waitley.com. Okay. I'll also give you M-M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y. One two zero zero. One two zero zero. At gmail dot com. And that was M M C C A R T H Y one two zero zero at Correct. gmail. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. I think we're done for now. Um, but we should reconvene. Yes, we'll continue your hearing till next uh, March, to the next hearing we have, which is in March. And my calendar here tells March us 4th. March, March 4th. Identical with February. 28 days. Yep. yep. And you can be the first hearing, that'll be 640. 640, all right. And I apologize, could I have the date again? March, March 4th. March 4th, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's 2.13 at 10 a.m. All right. We'll see you on the 13th. Great, thank you folks very much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Right. Thank you. The 13th is what, that's the viewing? The view. Saturday the 13th. Yes. <clears throat> All right, give us a minute, folks. We'll be with you. I should send something to Lynn um, about the visit. Yes. To post.
Let us know when you're ready, Mary. Oh, I am. You ready? Yep. All right. So um, this is the continuation of the uh, LaSalle hearing that we had started uh, a month or two ago. Um, so who's here on behalf of LaSalle? Good evening. For the record, Sophia Bitsis from R. Lebec Associates here with Chris and Bob Simony, as well as Neil Dack of Canna, uh, Canna Select. Um, Hello. How are you? Good evening. How are you doing? And John LaSalle. And John LaSalle. My apologies, John. Hello. So we had, um, since the last meeting, submitted some supplementary information, uh, including updated plans, as well as a narrative, actually two narratives, uh, one prepared by our office addressing the special permit criteria, as well as an additional packet prepared by Canna Select. Um, if I may, through the chair, share my screen just to touch upon the uh, plan revisions, and then I will turn it over to Chris and Bob and Neil to uh, go through the other items. Sure, go ahead, share the screen. Great. <clears throat> It looks like somebody needs to give me some authority here. Access. That would be Kirsten. Did that help? Let's see. Yep, it did. Thank you. <clears throat> Hopefully this will work. Um, I don't know which screen is actually being shared. So let me, do you guys see the site plan currently? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so I, hopefully I can zoom it in enough so that way you guys can see, uh, this is actually sheet S2, um, which is the actual site plan um, out of four sheets, but the additions and improvements that have been made and are being proposed is that the fence has been changed to a six foot vinyl fence to go around the perimeter of the improvements that are gonna be used for said facility, said um, cultivation establishment, as well as the addition of arborvitaes along the edges here and around the residential edges here. Um, those were the pretty much the uh, comments that we had received from the abutters as far as the site goes. Um, so we have addressed those and I will now turn it over to Chris um, to address the other items that had come up. Sophia, did you, you mentioned a measurement on the trees, right? Uh, yes, we did um, three to four foot uh, height arborvitaes and then the six foot uh, vinyl fence. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, I'm actually gonna turn over to Neil to go through some of the items that um, need to be addressed, but just wanna say thanks for everyone's patience as we work through this. Um, we wanted to make sure we took the time and got organized and uh, we're able to present a plan that made sense. And uh, again, we appreciate your patience. We do have a host agreement uh, for our grow with the, with the town of Whaley. So we're here as obviously the next step and uh, hopefully we can move this forward. But Neil, I'll turn it over to you to go through some of the specific items that uh, we needed to address here. Okay, okay. which is a procedural question. Sure. Mary knows, uh, what's the status with the planning board? I know, um, I don't know. You have an application in front of them as well. Uh, th they're they're meeting next uh, this coming Tuesday on the 9th. Okay. Okay. For the site plan review. All right, go ahead, Neil. Okay. Um, so I guess the, the what we want to look at is the um, the uh, document that was attached to the um, uh, to you know, as part of the materials. That's uh, what is it titled? Um, SP criteria updated narrative. Oh yeah, I can start my video. Um, do you guys see that? Um, now, do you want me to share my screen? Yes. I can share it, Neil, if you'd like as well, because I do have it up already. If it yeah, help please you. do. Perfect. That's much better. And you could just enlarge that. And um, uh, if you scroll down, we basically this is a list of the uh, of the zoning bylaws and the things, the requirements, uh, <clears throat> the specific requirements, and uh, our responses to those things. So um, 
Uh, we can go through them line by line, uh, or if you have anything that you want to focus on or skip to, uh, we can do it that way. Do you guys have a preference? Well, number one, I like the approach, and I like the opportunity to look at all the uh, criteria, all the bullet points. So, one by one is the best way to ask questions about each one. Won't do that if we want you to just continue. We'll tell you that too. Um, well, I, I didn't quite understand what she said, uh, what, you, what you said. With Said there, could you repeat that? Sure. Why don't you keep it up on the screen each each page, and then allow us board members to ask questions, or if we don't have any questions, we'll tell you to move on. Great. Was that audible? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So number one. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, Yes, clearly the use is, is potentially allowed under a special permit. So that's, uh, so we're certainly in the ballpark <laughs> with that. Um, and then you're not within 500 feet of any of the, uh, any of the, uh, negatives. So, so that's good. So you can keep going. Very good. Um, uh, I think that's, is that you, Sophia, that has to scroll? Yes. Yep, so I'm not sure the the um, response time here. So I think I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller just to make sure that the um, the questions all fit on one um, page here. Cause as I as I scroll it, um, it kicks it to the next the next yeah, paragraph here. So um, so yeah, just to, to kind of carry on to um, Roger's lead. So uh, number two speaks to the 500 feet uh, within any existing public or parochial private schools, kindergartens. Um, so the, the proposed facility complies with that requirement. Uh, number three says that it can't be located within 500 feet of any public recreation area. Um, we also obviously determined that the facility complies with that requirement. Uh, fourth, it can't be within 500 feet of any uh, existing churches. Um, again, we are 500 feet from, from those establishments. Um, number five says that a waiver can be requested at this time, a waiver is not required. Uh, so no need to request a waiver. Um, number six in, uh, speaks of that the establishment can't be or shall be located inside. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No marijuana establishment shall be located inside a building containing residential units. There are no residential units um, that are within the, the premise at this site either. Um, so marijuana yeah, establishment. A question of that. Of course. That. I know there's no... Um, co-location but there isn't there a residence on the facility somewhere there is a residence um currently this is a residence but it's no longer going to be used as such it's going to be converted to uh obviously just with, where the employees will be able to have lunch and, and stuff like that just like a kitchen um, cafeteria area but no longer a residence there is a residence here located but it's not within the confinement of the actual establishment got it okay good Okay, um, so just let me see here. Uh, marijuana establishments shall have a minimum uh, 50 foot setback from all property lines and shall have a minimum 20 foot setback from rear and side yards. Um, again, the site plan does comply with those requirements and dimensions are listed as well as building envelopes. Um, uh, let's see, section 171-28.6 uh, uh, speaks to the site development permitting standards and the application. Um, setback requirements um, are number one, which again are, are displayed on the stamp site plans and they do comply. Um, there are no um, newly erected or constructed buildings proposed at this time and all the business operation will be in the existing full footprint on site with the necessary renovations and improvements to make the, uh, obviously the business possible. So whatever improvements need to be made to contain odor, lighting, et cetera, um, will be made to the existing greenhouses to the extent necessary. Yeah. Can I just back up one second to of course. the setbacks? Um, can you just tell me the house that John and Deb currently live in, that's not contained <clears throat> in the footprint of Correct. the establishment, but is Correct. it part of the, you, you're buying the entire property, including that house? Yeah, that will be purchased, yes, at the, at the same time or at a, at a slightly later date. So 
is that 50 feet away from? It should be, uh, let me see if I can see. So the scale of this plan is one inch equals 20 feet. Um, obviously the, it's not gonna be to scale here. I don't know what the dimensions are um, to here. It looks, to it looks like it should be plenty, but. Um, yeah, I, I can confirm that dimension. Um, obviously I, I don't think I can do it on here because this isn't gonna show it to scale uh, and I don't have the CAD capabilities to determine that. But uh, Chris, do you know what the status of the residence is gonna be once the property is purchased? No, we, we don't have a plan for it at this point. Okay. Honestly. We, would, we would like to make it uh, to be able to house people in it. Uh, like, uh, however, we would like it to be able to be a residence, um, but continue to be uh, owned by Canis Select. But it would, no, or an, it would or an affiliated a, entity. I don't, I'm not sure it's going to be owned by that entity. It would be important Sorry. to know how far away it is, whether it does indeed meet the setback, because. Uh, let me let me ask you a question. I'm trying to get into your mind, Bob. Can you put that back on the screen, Sophia? Yep, absolutely. Sorry. Okay. So, we're, Bob, walk me through the setback that you're concerned about. Which, which, which I'm concerned about the setback as uh, right where that hand is now, where Sophia is uh, pointing. The setback between what is John and Deb LaSalle's house and. Well, I don't know which one that is. Which which, which of the two houses is is theirs? That that one right there. Okay. Okay. And then is it is it indeed, I mean, is it 50 feet back from the, I, I mean, I don't know the answer to that, but. Well, where's it gotta be, where does it gotta be 50 feet back from? That's a good question, right. whether it's the actual building or from the fence or, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that, uh, if I may, through the chair, I don't think that the residence has to be 50 feet away from, that's not part of the ordinance. It's the actual facility itself needs to be 50 feet away from the property line. Right, so let's it's, focus on this. We're talking about number seven under category C, I think. Yeah. Marijuana establishments shall have a minimum 50 foot setback from all property lines. I'm going to say something about the retailers. You're not a retailer. Right. So the the uh, the clause that references the residential units is number six, and it says no marijuana establishment shall be located inside a building containing residential units, including um, housing such as motels or dormitories, which are not the case. So the actual establishment is no, not that's located. Not the case. Right. So Bob's concern is, and if you could put back that screen again. Yeah. That the fifth. Okay. So why, where are the boundaries of the establishment? I guess that's the question. Yep, part. so this is the, the, the confines of the establishment are within the fenced area and we are within the setback requirement. So this hash line is 50 feet from the front and then this hash line is 20 feet from the side and rear, which is way back here. But So the setbacks of the actual establishment are, are met through the site plan. So, um, so then I got a little bit lost when there was discussion about purchasing the house, John and Deb's house separately. How can you do that? Isn't it all one lot? Is it all, isn't it all one existing? Uh, there's, there's two separate lots. One, one which is my house um, and the, the property out to the front towards Claverick Road and out towards uh, LaSalle Drive and the flower shop property is the uh, where the fence line is okay. around All and right. including so more legally but, without any other permission you could sell one lot i'll call them a yes. lot separate yes. from the other lot. there are two okay. separate lots got it all right so there's two separate lots yeah and i do believe there's more than 50 feet between my house and any of the buildings that are on the uh on the the flower shop lot I just wanted to ask, and now another question, since you're talking about that as a second parcel, where was LaSalle Park going? Because that's, uh, you, you put that in your, um, yeah. in one of the. Uh, that, that's down on the south, that's on the southeast corner where the, where we the have the flowers right. growing uh, yeah. this summer on that, right in there, yeah. But it's either in the can of select uh, or the the text, no, I guess it's in the can of select um, where they talk about the creation of, you know, there's going to be park benches and things like that. 
but they don't own that property. Yes, they do. That's part of it. That will be part of it. It's going to be purchased by someone in the group at okay. the same time as they purchased uh, the, the LaSalle Florist plot. Okay. I'm just trying to get it all clear in my mind. Yep. No, that's fine. Yep. No, the purchase contract stipulates that we will also purchase that, that land as well. Okay. Let me close on the. I'm, I'm going to jump back to the 50 feet then. So, <clears throat> does the marijuana establishment have to be 50 feet from John and Deb's property line? Um, Let's see if I can decipher the parcel lines. I don't know if we have them on the existing conditions plan. Have them separated on here. Yeah, I only have them as, as showing as one parcel on, on, on our plan. Um, have they been split recently, John, or have they always been two separate lots? No, from, it was in the 1950s. They were split. Okay. Um, and they're owned by the same parties? They're both yeah, owned they're by you? They're all owned by LaSalle. Right now, they're owned by LaSalle Florist Incorporated. Yeah, okay. So that's which probably my maybe. wife and I are the sole uh, shareholders. Yeah, so I, I'm assuming what had happened is because they were under common ownership that it, they have merged together um, to make them complying would be my no, guess. Well, it was all one piece earlier. And when my parents built the house, my grandfather uh, deeded them the property out front. Okay. So looking at the big picture then, taking them both as one, you're easily more than 50 feet from the next property. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Mr. Chair, do you want me to continue to go through the narrative? Just one more thought on that. So sure. where, where's the next... Is it, um, yeah, where's the next property that we would start to measure the, from the 50 feet over so there? These, yeah. Yep, these line right on the other side of this this darker line here. Right, and that's, can you just represent to me how far that is approximately? Yep, so this is the, tw I believe this is a 20 foot setback. I think I have them labeled here. Hold on, let me see if I can get a better sheet. Yep, so I have the zoning setbacks right on the plan. So it's 50 to the front and then it has to be 25 on the side. 25? Uh, maybe tw 20, I 20. think. Yep, 20, my apologies. And whose property is that on that side? So I have uh, land now or uh, formerly of Ms. Pamela Barub is this property right here. And then this is LaSalle Florist extra parcel here. So my understanding is that the house is currently on the same parcel as the facility and that the additional lot that is referenced is this front lot here as a, as a separate lot. Yeah. It's the not the on house the that's, it's not the house the lot that the house is on. The, the house is not currently carved off as a separate parcel. This yeah. is the lot no. here that is owned separately. No. The, the third, that's the third lot down on the corner of Claverack road. That's, that's the third lot. The second lot is my house out to uh, LaSalle Drive. And then the first plot is the retail, uh, the florist business and the greenhouses. So there John, are three, there are three, three separate plots. John, you said that the park is going on the third parcel? Yes, down on the corner of Claverick Road and LaSalle Drive right there, yep. That, so the, the whole kit and caboodle is being yes. bought. We're growing flowers there now. We grow flowers there every year. Right, right, yep. right. Okay. Go ahead, Sophia. Great. 
Um, okay, so again, to the dimensional requirements um, that speak to uh, setback requirements, we kind of just spoke about that. Uh, parking and loading requirements, on-site parking for 10 vehicles is currently available. Additional parking areas may be added as needed. Um, obviously, we refer to the site plan and page nine of the narrative uh, for such. So it does comply with parking. A site screening. Uh, so the site plans have been updated to include a proposed six foot vinyl fence and arborvitaes uh, to screen the establishment from the abutters uh, as it previously indicated and shown. Um, lighting and security. So this refers to page 11 of the Canna Select Supplement Packet. So I don't know, Neil, if you want to just touch briefly upon lighting and security. Sure. Um, as far as that's concerned, the, the main thing that the town's have been concerned about and I want to reassure you guys is that there's not going to be any uh, lighting for security purposes because the security cameras will be able to uh, use infrared to see in the dark. Um, so the only lighting would be similar to what is there now, just, uh, just night lighting for people to see, to get to their cars when they're, when they're exiting the facility, just normal safety lighting, but nothing, uh, no big lighting. And then, um, but the, the, the facility will be secure uh, and meet all of the state regulations, which does include the security fence uh, as a camera system, an alarm system. We have, on, we'll have ongoing uh, relations with the local police and fire. Um, and uh, that, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically the, the, big, the big idea of it uh, is, is it's not uh, supposed to be noticeable, but it's supposed to be quite effective. That's what we're going for. So question about lighting the greenhouses at night yes sir um how do you shield uh grow lighting from the sky a great question i'm glad you asked that uh i was thinking about covering it here but then i thought well it's not really security but it is lighting so that's a good point um uh the greenhouses that um we'll, we'll have to when we convert them have light deprivation systems, which are like basically curtains that go up uh, on the inside of the, of the greenhouse under, underneath, the, underneath the roof, and, but over the plants and over the lights. And, um, and the idea for that is that one, it, we need it to grow on a 12 hour cycle when the days are longer than 12 hours. So we need to be able to make it dark in there, but also we can use it when we have to grow on an 18 hour cycle when we have, uh, with, when the light cycle might push into the evening. And then uh, if those light deprivation systems are up, you won't see the lights in the evening. We'll put them up as, you know, just as the sun's setting so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't detract. So we'll just, we're, we're using the sun and we're providing supplemental lights for the plant. And during the times of year when we need to, we'll just keep that light deprivation system up and it'll block, keep the light in. So you won't see it in the evening. Won't we'll see it from the side or the top. Correct. Of the, of the greenhouses. Correct. The sides are going to be insulated and they're not going to be see through at all. Just if I may add that that also acts as a heat retention uh, curtains in the wintertime. It's a fairly standard greenhouse practice. So. Thanks, Jeff. Go ahead, Sophia, or if there's any other questions. Thanks. So I will go on to uh, number five again, Neil. I'm going to kick it to you. Uh, it has to do with noise and odors. Um, our response was that we want to be the best in odor mitigation, which is um, why we plan on engaging Bayer Scientific for our odor mitigation plan. And Neil, I'll let you take it from there to give a little bit more information. Sure. Uh, one, of the, one of the big things that we've been talking about is odor. And one of the major things that was asked for is uh, to find a company who has had proven success. Um, we uh, have reached out and had a couple of conversations with Buyer Scientific, and they've sent us an engagement letter, which uh, basically would be the materials that uh, the town is requesting. But we did want to have a conversation with you before engaging with them because there's a, a, a fee that's uh, significant that goes along with that. So. Um, but uh, just to sum them up, they're a company out of California. They've worked with Canopy Growth, which is, I believe, the largest cannabis cultivation uh, operation in the United States. They had do 
every different kind of cultivation that you can think of. They've also worked with uh, two other large uh, cultivations in that are of a similar size in that area in California. Um, they do work with companies uh, around the, the United States and around the world to do the similar odor, mitiga odor mitigation. So um, they do have um, reviews from those major companies that they've worked with, and they will include it as part of a package once we engage with them. We just wanted to just show you that, show you this at this phase and just sort of get your get your thoughts and make sure that you would agree that that's a reasonable solution before we do engage. Let me ask a question, and maybe again, we can look at the site plan. How many neighbors are within, let's just say 500 feet? So I believe we have a sheet uh, that Roger, shows- Roger, you're, you're, you're a little muted, Roger. Is there something blocking your microphone? I don't know, maybe it's my zoning bylaws. I'll move them out of the way. There you go. So this is actually um, page five of the site plan, uh, which shows it's a required sheet that shows uh, uses within a thousand feet of the locust. So the dark uh, or the hash line shows a thousand feet. Um, so obviously the, the 500 radius is gonna be an, about half, but um, there's a residence here and here and on the opposite side of the field here. So those are the only two that are direct abutters to this proposed facility or establishment. Two or three, did you say? I'm sorry, three. Two down here and one on the other side of the field up here. Where do the Cybulskis live? I know they're not here tonight. But... I believe they're on or number 13. That's correct. Mark, yeah. I think Mark, I did see, I think I did see Mark. And... They are here tonight. Yeah. Mark, yep. uh, are here. Okay, good. Yep, so this is 13 here. All right, so... Um... Well, even though there might be only three direct abutters, just eyeballing within 500 feet, it might be. Yep. So I would seven or eight. Um, seven or eight. I would, yeah, I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then yep. there's one way back here. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that gives me an idea. Okay. So why don't you go back to your odor mitigation section? Okay, great. Um, so as far as that's concerned, um, the bioscientific will work with us, uh, work with our greenhouse builders. Um, we're going to have sealed greenhouses that have HVAC systems that filter the air to eliminate odors that way. But Byers also has an additional um, spray-based odor mitigation that uh, it masks the odor around greenhouses has been very effective. Um, so, um, and then they also have a uh, principal ways of measuring the, uh, the odor on the, on an ongoing basis to ensure that we, uh, to, that we keep, uh, keep that contained. Well, for me, I mean, that, that's a huge odor mitigation is a huge thing. And I just don't understand, um, you have an, in, you have an engagement letter, but we don't know exactly how buyers scientific is going to mitigate the odors that are created here. Do we, or, or have I missed something? They're, they use, um, they use like an odor mask, like a, uh, it's basically a spray that goes outside the greenhouses. They have sensors that can detect any odorants that uh, may be coming out of the exhaust port or any other areas. There probably won't be any because we're also going to use carbon filtration. They also know how to use the combination of the two very effectively, the two systems very effectively. And also the two systems provide a, a fail safe for one another. So the, the odor containment pr process is a combination of one, sealing the greenhouses and having negative pressure so that, uh, so that if um, there is any tiny little hole in it, it's, the air is going to be going into the greenhouses and the only air coming out will be out of an exhaust port that can have as many uh, carbon filter fans on it as you want in a line. Um, and uh, usually I, I've heard of people doing three and two. A lot of places just do one and it's enough. It just depends on the needs of the facilities. Um, every odor mitigation strategy is catered to the needs of facilities. Some facilities don't have as big of a need as 
we do, we would be on the higher end because we want to just be sure to take care of everybody with that concern. I'll just, and I'll just add to that, that these Sorry. folks are obviously well known and they've, they've worked with other companies that have legalized marijuana far earlier than Massachusetts has. So it's a proven, you know, proven company that's worked with, with other organizations. So, um, you know, and again, to Neil's point, we have the letter from them, but we didn't want to go forward until we had this discussion to see if there was any other uh, requirements that would come out of this. Um, we wanted to engage them after we got um, positive, positive, positive feedback. Well, I don't mean to, I mean, I, I don't want to rain on your parade and I understand that you're really, you know, you're doing a great job in explaining all this, but here's my situation. We have, this will be the, I think third marijuana, third or fourth marijuana growing facility that we have the possibility of approving and not a single one of them yet is up and running so we have no data we have no um understanding of whether any of these promised odor mitigation systems work yes we could read about you know in some other climate in some other state that it works but I just, I want to maintain a constant degree of skepticism because I think that odor mitigation is really, really important, especially for those people that live closest to it. So that's why I keep asking these questions and I, I will remain a skeptic until I see it work. Well, here's where I would jump in with Bob, <clears throat> that I share your same concerns. We have to require that the petitioner produce their odor mitigation plan, whether it's prepared by buyer scientific or somebody else. But certainly if they have started negotiations with buyers scientific, I would encourage them to conclude those negotiations, have buyers prepare the plan and then submit it to us as part of the approval process, because we can't approve it, can't approve the whole thing without the odor mitigation part being approved. And that once we see the written report from Bayer Scientific, we may choose to under our powers that we have at the ZBA to uh, hire at the expense of the petitioner, our own expert to analyze the buyer's report mm -hmm. for us. Unless we don't need to make that decision tonight. I think we need to see the buyer's scientific report first. It may be so uh, slam dunk that we're convinced by it. And, uh, and then that's, that's one step forward. Of course, the, uh, the abutters would have a right to review it too. And they may have other concerns that we don't even uh, see initially in our review. So in answer to the couple of questions here, from the proponent's perspective, uh, yes, we're giving you feedback that we, we want to see a report, a plan, on a mitigation plan to be precise, and that we encourage you to, to get one as, as part of this process. Because a lot of what we're doing with the marijuana approval from the ZBA perspective is just making sure you meet the benchmarks. And some of them are pretty easy to meet, to meet right? I mean, the site plan, you can prepare it, you can tinker it a little bit, you can move some fences around. Uh, so that's not really... Um, all that sophisticated, but but this particular area is a um, uh, an area that's going to affect the neighbors, and um, and we don't have any. We have had no ability to go around and use our own noses and smell any facilities, right? Um, so that's that's our problem. Right, I understand. Yep. No, we get it. Okay. We're happy to do whatever whatever it takes here. We understand this is a major topic of uh, conversation, so we'll uh, we'll do whatever we need to do to make Great. you guys comfortable. I appreciate that. I also appreciate the fact that you all sent me hard copies of all this material because I did study all of the uh, maps and I did read very carefully um, uh, everything that you sent me, and I really appreciate that. And I know that you're working, um, you know, very hard on on making this right. I uh, just you know, I, I got to look at the fact that we just don't have any data out there from all these things. And it would be terrible to have approved four different ones and then to discover that, oh, my 
goodness, this really doesn't work here in the valley with the kind of climate we have or whatever. So that's why I just have this skepticism. That's all. But I thank you all for all of the stuff that you sent me so that I could understand this better. Would it be, would it be helpful for us to um, locate other facilities in, in Massachusetts that have had success? Would that be helpful? Because I think there, there are probably some pretty good examples out there of, of facilities that do work that have worked with the odor mitigation, because this is a large topic of conversation. We just want to make sure we can provide yep. everything we can to get this I would, in the process. I, I can't speak, Roger's the chair, but I would love to see something like that. That'd be great. Okay. Oh, yeah, you, um, you are the proponent. So the burden of proof is on you uh, to prove your case. Um, anything you can bring to the table that sure. uh, helps prove the case is going to be useful. I mean, it's, it might not be useful if they're using a totally different mitigation plan than you propose to use. So there's got to be some sure. some meshing there. Sure. Um, but sure, uh, okay. that would potentially be useful. Thank you. To, to follow up a little more on what Bob is saying, yeah, the, the example should be somewhat similar geography, topography, environment as, as we have here. Uh, you know, we're in a, in a river valley that has uh, moderate, say, temperatures, different air current, different temperature than what's in, say, in Berkshires or even in Boston or in Worcester. We're different. And to find an example in Boston area, it's a different climate. It's in Massachusetts, but it's not in a in a uh, river valley like we are. So I, I guess look at places like that, even if it, Connecticut has river valley, Connecticut River continues into Connecticut or even north of here. I guess that may be similar environmental conditions rather than just looking at a state for examples. Okay. Okay, so through the chair, if it's okay to keep going through the, yes. the narrative. Perfect, thank you. Um, so next on the list um, or in order are energy efficiency and then water efficiency. Uh, Neil, do you wanna to speak to, to both of those? Absolutely. Um, yeah, energy efficiency, uh, we wanna operate as uh, maximum, maximally efficient as we possibly can. That would include the use of LED lights. Um, we, uh, as far as uh, water efficiency goes, we're going to have a circulation, uh, a circulatory system uh, uh, where the water is recirculated, and, transpirate, and we have transpiration recapture. So uh, there will be zero runoff. Um, and um, um, as, as far as uh, heating and cooling efficiency, we're also going to run uh, maximally efficient heating and cooling systems. Uh, such as systems that use uh, pipes that run through the ground that use sub uh, use the temperatures below the frost layer to um, to make it easier to cool and heat. So you have to use less energy. Um, uh, the ceiling of the greenhouses will help in many ways with the uh, insulation as well. Um, any any other questions about? energy efficiency or water efficiency. So if I understand uh, the proposal, you are going to rely on um, wells on the property and irrigation from the Mill River as your primary source of water for the cultivation. That's right, the, the well on the property would be, uh, would be uh, enough to Get us going because the because of the level of efficiencies of, of the systems, and because all the water is reused. So once you draw the water, you're reusing it and reusing it, reusing it, filtering it, reusing it, etc. You don't dump it. Um, so we when you do use, um, obviously we have to add a little bit more water to the system every now and then. And then I'm sure there's a little bit of transpiration that escapes and whatnot. But but we're trying to. But but the idea is these systems are. Uh, maximally efficient. And we're working with um, a, a, several different companies in the construction of this uh, or the design of this of the of the whole thing, from the climate control, et cetera, down to the the uh, plant watering and feed systems. 
Uh, uh, Bob, the, um, we're not going to be using any water from the Mill River. This is all from our, our existing wells. Uh, okay. the, the Mill River, when we do use that water, is for our outdoor cultivation of our field out there, which will right. not be in use. Okay. And um, on your water usage in your, your Canna document, 15,000 plants, two gallons per day? It's pretty shocking. This figures I got from the, uh, and that's, and that has to do with the, the transpiration recapture. That's not to say that they are, those, those plants are transpiring much more than that, but we're capturing that and adding that back to the system. So the overall, this, the, the overall system is so efficient that you would only have to add two gallons per day. That's stunning. It's sorry. Talking, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't believe him until I talked extensively with um, with the, the folks at Zipgrow, which is a vertical hydroponic systems company, and they explained to me their data, how long they've been in business, uh, and a bunch of different uh, angles about it, and and why it works, etc. And I, it's pretty cool. And I'm really into uh, water conservation. I'm really into preservation of the land. I'm a big, you know, big into nature. I love taking, being in the woods and all that. And just, um, and so it's, it's, it's important to not only for a business purpose, but also for the environment. Um, okay. So s staying on the water thing for just one more m moment on page 40 of your Canna document, Canna select document, you say that in the event that both the shallow and deep wells fail, city water is available as a tertiary option. Um, Really? Yeah. I mean, I know we have, I know that you, that we're connected in most places to, um, but I also know that, for example, last summer, uh, we had to go on a, a severe water restriction um, based on what we have, I, uh, based on what, what existed last summer. And uh, I mean, I am very uh, worried about uh, our public water system um, because I just don't think it's an infinite supply of water that we have there. So our, well, our, our residential wells and the wells for the flower shop uh, never, never uh, failed last summer during the drought. And um, so I, it, we do have uh, uh, residential water for both the residents and my residents, but um, you know, our, our wells didn't run dry last year either. So. And the, and also the um, the usage of those wells would be far less than um, as far as the amount of water that we're drawing than current usages. So we expect them to okay. continue to function. Thank you. Great. So um, number eight speaks of hazardous materials. Um, uh, there has to be a submission of a complete list of chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers, et cetera, to be provided. Um, and the plan should include the spill containment and cleanup procedures, provisions for indoor secure security of hazardous materials and wastes. Um, the response indicates that all hazardous materials will be stored in compliance with state and local regulations. I don't know if there's any additional comments there. I can keep going. We don't uh, anticipate having many hazardous materials, if any at all, on site. Um, obviously, we'll have cleaners and things like that. Uh, anything that is um, has any warnings at all on it will be stored in in lockers that are designed for hazardous materials with appropriate labels. Um, so, number number nine speaks to signage. Um, no advertising signs shall be located within 20 feet of public or private ways. Um, obviously, this is understood. This isn't a <coughs> facility, so there's not going to be any huge signs, you know, or anything along those lines um, proposed. Uh, number 10 speaks to the greenhouses. Uh, so the pre-existing greenhouses will remain in the same location. However, significant renovations are required to address the change of use and properly addressing the containment of light and the filtration of odor. Uh, please see supplemental information provided here with. So obviously the proponent proposes to make uh, whatever renovations are necessary to comply um, with said concerns of lighting and odor. Um, 
I'm not sure to what extent that may be, but they are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that they are, you know, up to snuff and I'm able to perform properly for the, the, the proposed use. I, I also, it, you know, in terms of, of this particular item, it's important to say that this is exactly why the bylaws were written the way they were, because you're, you're using something that already exists um, so that it doesn't change the, uh, you know, I mean, obviously there, there would be upgrades to the greenhouses, et cetera, but it's still, it's a good thing that it's being used for something that is, even though the state doesn't want to call it agriculture, it's still agriculture. Right. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, so number 11 uh, refers to buildings. Um, at this time, there are no exterior improvements proposed um, other than to renovate said greenhouses uh, to contain the lighting and an odor um, for the proposed cultivation establishment. So pretty much reiterating uh, response number 10. Um, number 12 um, has to do with marketing. So again, this uh, facility is not going to be a retail uh, facility. Um, so this does not really apply to this proposal. Um, hours of operation. Um, the same, this isn't a retail facility and it won't be open to the public. Um, it'll just be for obviously deliveries and pickups and the employees on site maintaining a uh, said cultivation operation. Um, number 14 again has to do with retailer limits, which doesn't apply here. Um, applications um, obviously need to follow proper procedure. Um, which in this case we have uh, applications to the planning board and the zoning boards of appeals have also been provided to the clerk's office and to, in compliance of this section. Uh, 16 site plan review uh, as previously indicated earlier in the hearing. Uh, we do have an application before the planning board. Uh, we do have a hearing coming up this this coming Tuesday uh, for said site plans, um, including the, providing the thousand foot um, aerial photograph, which I had referred to previously. Just keep going here. Um, as far as reporting goes, um, obviously the proponent will comply uh, with all of these requirements, um, providing you know names, phone numbers, emails, etc. Um, all that stuff will be provided and is understood. As is the change in license or owner. Uh, obviously, if there's a change of such, uh, the town will be notified. Uh, change of ownership, same thing. It's understood. Community host agreement. Uh, the host agreement was approved by the Board of Selectmen on December 30th um, of 2020. So that is in place. Um, Section 171-31 is additional special permit uh, criteria, which is what we are before the ZBA uh, this evening requesting. Um, the proposed project shall comply with the env environmental performance standards as specified in said section. Um, response is that it's understood and that the proposed, the proposed cultivation facility will operate in a similar fashion as the existing use, which is a floral shop. Um, again, a, a similar agricultural <laughs> use, just a different product um, coming to fruition there. Um, the proposal will not create traffic congestion. Uh, it's not a retail facility, so it'll be similar to the current employment uh, currently at the floral shop. Um, same with deliveries. I think maybe they'll even be maybe less frequent as they are um, to the existing floral shop in use. Um, the proposed project shall not create any significant emissions of noise, dust, fumes, noxious gases, radiation, and other significant adverse environmental impact. Um, no emissions are expected or anticipated. Obviously, um, odor is, is a main concern, which was previously discussed um, and will be addressed as needed. Uh, D has to do with the proposed project shall not increase erosion, flooding, or sedimentation. Um, so there are no site improvements proposed to increase erosion, flooding, or sedimentation. Um, everything is remaining as is with gravel driveways, uh, no change to impervious surface. Um, therefore, it'll you know not create any erosion or flooding at this time. Okay, E, the proposed project shall not create significant adverse impacts to the quality of surface waters or groundwaters during or after construction. Um, again, there's no proposed construction at this time, a simple renovations to the greenhouses. Um, so nothing substantial that would uh, impact the quality of surface or groundwater. Uh, the project shall be uh, compatible with existing uses and other uses allowed by right in the district. Um, I guess this was addressed in the uh, community host agreement. 
um, and that it will be designed to be compatible with the character and scale of the neighboring properties. G has to do with the, the, um, the design of the project shall minimize the visibility of visually degrading elements and to protect the neighboring properties from potential detrimental or offensive uses through screening or vegetated buffers. Um, so we have updated the site plans to address both, um, both providing a vinyl fence, um, which is more aesthetically pleasing, as well as a vegetated buffer of arborvitaes um, to the neighboring properties. Oops. Uh, the design shall, um, shall minimize earth removal and volumes cut and fill. Again, there's no um, improvements at this time that would disturb the site. Um, simply, it'll improve the aesthetics of the current facility by upgrading the, the greenhouses. Um, the removal of existing trees and vegetation. There's no removal of existing trees or vegetation at this time. Um, the design of the project shall provide for adequate methods of disposal of sewage, refuge, and uh, waste generated from the use. So the site currently includes multiple bathrooms, uh, which pipe into the septic slash leach field, um, which are ample for the current staff use. Uh, can a select staff will not exceed the current staff number uh, during the first phase of this operation. So the, how would you define the first phase of the operation? Uh, Neil, do you want to expand on your... The, the first phase is just going to be what we what we're proposing here. We're we're not fully certain of how the second phase. We do have a hundred thousand uh, square foot canopy allowed in our host agreement, um, but we've not determined what our second phase is going to be at this time. But the, the first phase is just what we're proposing right now. Well, how many square feet is that? It's I believe the total greenhouse square footage is about twenty six thousand. Is that correct, Neil or John? It's something like something around there. Or is it? Uh, I think it's it's less than twenty thousand. Okay. Thank you. So, um, last but not least, is letter K. The proposed use will not overload the capacity of public facilities such as water and sewage uh, sewer systems, storm drainage, schools, and refuse um, disposal facilities. So, public water will be used in the office area only. All cultivation will be done by the wells on site as previously discussed. And I think that is, that is all of the um, additional narrative addressing the special permit criteria that is provided. Okay, good. So um, let me throw it open to any abutters who have questions. Hi, uh, Mark Sobolski here. Um, not really a question, but um, again, just want to say thanks to the folks from Canna Select, um, you know, throughout the process and during, you know, the, um, the uh, community uh, outreach meeting, you know, they clearly heard our concerns and made some improvements here with the installation of the vinyl fence and the uh, plantings and, and, you know, the, the, the um, plans to have reduced lighting outside. So it seems like they've really listened to us and we really appreciate that, um, certainly. And also, we you know really appreciate the added diligence in this discussion around odor control um, because as abutters, you know that's something that we are that's the biggest concern right now. Um, and so, you know, seeing a plan like that and uh, making sure that's um, something that will keep those odors out is is really you know um, as as abutters really uh, important for us. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Mark. I, I appreciate that. And uh, we definitely want to take care of you and your parents. I know, you've, I know John's known you guys for a really long time. John's like family to me. I've been living here and working with him. He doesn't think so. I think I can tell by the expression on his face. No, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, so definitely want to take care of you guys. So appreciate you. Anything else, Mark? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Any other abutters who wish to speak at this time? Hi, I just wanted to reiterate what my brother indicated in regards to the fencing, the shrubs too and just hearing what our concerns were at the community host agreement and reading through um, what you have 
modified and been more detailed with, we appreciate that. And we also appreciate um, the work of the board in investigating and being certain of where the odor control um, issues, how that will evolve and eventually, you know, if this happens, um, comes to be. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Other rebutters? We have some written correspondence and one's a short letter here that I received from the, um, the Waitley Historical Commission. Mary, did you receive a copy of it? Uh, <laughs> how long ago was this? <laughs> About a week, a week ago, I think I might have, well, it's January 20th. I, I don't, re no, not in January. All right, well, why don't I just read it into the record that says, it says, um, first of all, it's from the Historical Commission, it's dated January 25th, 2021. It's addressed to both myself and Don Sluter uh, as planning board chair. And it says that the Waitley Historical Commission discussed at its January 18th meeting, Waitley Real Estate Holdings application to install a marijuana cultivation site at 23A LaSalle Drive. Although we do not anticipate any impact on historic resources, the planned facility is located in an area where prehistoric sites may occur. We request that the planning board work to minimize the extent and depth of any ground disturbance on the property and to ensure that the applicant agrees to halt work and notify the historical commission should any evidence of prehistoric features be discovered during installation of the new facilities, period, end of letter. Um, so it's, it's really addressed more to the planning board and to Don Sluter, but I did receive a copy of it. So I did want to read it into the record, which I've done. Now, we received a, a more lengthy letter. Mary, do you remember this one? This was um, over a month ago from some neighbors who said they couldn't be present and they wanted to make sure we had their- I do remember that. And uh, you know, do you happen to have a copy of it? Let me see. I don't know if I have one right here. If I may request through the chair, is there any way we can get copies of those letters, either emailed to us um, or somehow provided? I'll be, able, as well? I'll be able to come up with the one that I'm looking for now, though I may not be able to find it at the moment. Okay, um, thank you. The one that Roger was talking about from the Historical Commission, I know I, I didn't receive a copy of that, but Roger, if you want to send me a copy, I can send everything to Sophia. Yes, okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. So are you gonna look for that other letter, Mary? I don't have it here. It, okay. um, it was a letter that was longer than I would ordinarily read into the record in the first place. Let me see if let me see if I can find it on email right now. Okay. It, it was quite a while ago, so it may take a while to track it down. It might have even been in 2020. I think it was. Way back in that era. <laughs> While we're waiting, waiting for this, this is a question. John, is the house itself that old to be a historic structure? <laughs> no. Or building? No. Um, I'm not sure which part you're referring to, but 
uh, my grandfather bought the property in, a, in the late 1920s, like 1928 or 29, or maybe even 1930, and built the greenhouse and the flower shop part in uh, 1934 in the work area. And uh, so that's, that's the oldest. There were two existing barns on the property when he built it, the tobacco barn at the north end and the hay barn at the southwest end. And um, I'm not sure when those two were built, but um, uh, all nothing is nothing is of historical value, um, anything more than you know eighty or ninety years old. So. Okay. Thank you. Just so yeah. I'm clear, is there a is there a specific um, hearing or something we need to go to for that, or or a board that we need to talk through anything with, or is that simply just if we find something? It's if we start, if you start during construction, um, start excavating and finding, obviously they want to be notified before you start excavating anything. So if you start finding that you need to go below below ground, which isn't proposed at this time, okay. um, we wouldn't have to notify them. But if, if anything comes about where um, you need to go below, below for surface, they want to be notified first to make sure they're present. Okay. Um, Mary, I just emailed you that letter. Um, I just found one. I think there were two from Stuart Ludlam, which, what's the date on the one you found? Um, Saturday, December 5th. Okay, and I've got one from November 5th, Thursday. <laughs> I will open that one, the first one. Roger, do you want me to read the letter? Excuse me. Um, how long is the one you're looking at? Uh, longer, than one, longer than one page? Oh, yes. It's four full pages. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I was getting at. It's, it's, we don't usually spend that amount of time reading a letter. Um, on the other hand... This is, the one that, this is the one that contained most of what he had to say. That's why it's so long. That's the November one? Right. And then there, I, the other one may have been more specific, but, <laughs> but the, the, yeah. How, how long was that December one? It's a, a couple of paragraphs. Well, I'm going to start, let's start with that one. Okay. Do you want me to read it? I have it up. That'd be great. It says, Dear Sir, one month ago I emailed you a letter concerning the possible sale of LaSalle property and the permitting of a marijuana growing facility on that property. Apparently, as a result, I received a notice of a Zoom meeting in inviting questions from concerned citizens. I have already asked those questions. I deem most important to see no immediate purpose in my searching out a facility with Zoom capable computers. We are also self-isolating during the pandemic since we are the most vulnerable population. I would like to point out that my daughter who has worked for LaSalle's for several years and know many of the neighbors remarked in a phone call on the situation. Her comment was, I pity the neighbors. Frankly, that is my own opinion too. My daughter probably knows as much about the situation as I and her mother who still works for the LaSalle's. I cannot quite understand the logic behind this proposal. The operation at LaSalle's is relatively old. Upgrading and modernizing, in my experience, is often more expensive than starting from scratch. This is particularly true where strict cleanliness is needed to prevent the introduction and spread of diseases and insect pests. Don't forget the entire process must take place in a sealed environment, kept so by having air pressure inside equal it should be slightly less than the outside operation. Of course, an article I came across in Psychology Today indicates arousal and pregnancy rates may suffer if you are stoned on pot. 
thus encouraging the pot industry might actually decrease the rate of population growth and in turn reduce the problems you face on the zoning board of appeals. Worth a thought? Don't forget the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. I don't think this is really uh, appropriate. Sat Jupiter is in the bright object in the sky. Saturn is above, um, easily seen by the rings in the of Saturn. Um, also, don't forget the Gemini meteor shower, which is beginning to show and peaks out. Sincerely, Stuart Ludlam. What's his address? Does he list his address? I think I have. Uh, I just emailed you the just the uh, November letter, the long one, in case you want to look through it for highlights or something. But let me just see. Uh, where he's on Claverack Road um, to the west of our property on the south side of Claverack Road. Okay, thanks. On the opposite side of Mill River. Um, well, I guess I should look at what you just emailed me. Let me just look at that. This time it came as an attachment. All right. Got it. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> On the one hand, I feel an obligation to the public to not ignore their attempts to be heard. Uh, on the other hand, these meetings are accessible via telephone. So lack of a computer is not in and of itself uh, a death knell to being able to participate. He's got a number of paragraphs here. I'm going to read the title of the paragraphs and then he's got a conclusion. I'll read the full conclusion. So he's asking us to consider um, security features, odor, water supply issues, wastewater, light, And I believe we have discussed those as part of the application. All right, so his conclusion says on page 64 of the site plan, Canna Select states that success begins with commitment to community. I have heard so many businesses, industries and politicians say this and then ignore their commitments when times got tough. <clears throat> uh, that I'd rather they just pay their fair share of taxes. Well, the South have always been good people and good neighbors, and that is what we want and expect from anyone purchasing the property. In terms of the site plan, it is well done as far as it goes. Although I worry about the adequacy of their water supply, there probably is no problem with their water quality standards. Their plan for disposal seems adequate. Odor control seems adequate. Although I wish I had a time to do a, a bit more research here. Overall, it seems that Canada Select is trying to be a thoughtful neighbor. The problem for me is the total lack of data. What are the yields expected of the LaSalle wells? What sort of water quality do they have? Where did that two gallon a day estimate of water loss come from? How do they keep evapotranspiration so low in a plant species that uses quite a bit of water? What are the details of lighting for the crop? And will there be any control measures to reduce the impact on their neighbors? Considering the capital that they are investing in this project, I'm sure that they have thought all of these things, but I'd dearly like to have answers. 
So my objections come down to quality of life and privacy. Those of us to mo who moved to Waitley did so for the lifestyle the town offered. Frontage and acreage requirements separated homes enough to afford a degree of privacy not found in most suburbs. There was enough room to plant shrubberies that afforded additional privacy. Wildlife was abundant. Evenings could be spent peacefully with fireflies and constellations. Perhaps some people moved here because it was cheaper than in many towns and cities. But the Canada Select project will change this for their immediate neighbors. Evenings will be artificially lit. During most of the day, guards will be pacing the perimeter. There will probably be nice people, but they will not be paid to be friendly with neighbors. Although the positioning of surveillance cameras will not be known for security reasons, the distance between the defended perimeter and activities in the neighbor's yards will carry the implication that you, the neighbor, are on candid camera. Living next to such an ultimately extremely private and defended property gives one a sense of unease. If such a project moved in next door to me and I was young enough to do so, I would move. Fortunately, there are a lot of trees between us and the LaSalle's property, but for most of us, the majority of our net worth is tied up in our real estate. Will it be more difficult for Canis Lux neighbors to sell their property when that firm moves in? Will the neighbor's property value be less so they cannot afford as nice a home as they had in Waitley if they move? For older residents, it is harder to move than for the younger. We are not as energetic as we were, and our memories are all here. It is hard to accept that life will be less pleasant. Towns grow and rural areas develop into suburbs and urban areas. This is called progress by those who make a profit from it, but it comes at the expense of others. If you read the news sections of journals devoted to the biological sciences, you would know it comes at the expense of our own security and health. So I might add in Canis Lux's favor, at least it is agriculture. The ultimate threat I used to hear in years past was, would you rather have low income housing? Of course not. I'd like a florist. Sincerely, Stuart Ludlam. All right, that's the end of the conclusion. Um, does the petitioner care to address any of those points? I think if if possible, we'd love a, copies of those letters so we can read them in full and, and respond separately. Is that all right? Yeah. We did address a lot of those concerns at the community outreach meeting. Um, similar concerns were brought up regarding property values and things of that nature, but we'd, we'd prefer to put a formal response together if, if that'd be better received from the group. I think that's fine. Yeah, so I'll send you the letter that I have from the Historical Commission, Mary, and then you can send a package of all three of those letters okay. to Neil and his group. Okay. And, okay, and Chris. Thank you. And Sophia, all of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, so where does that leave us? Um, any board members have other questions? Let me ask this question. How long do you- You're muted, Bob. Yeah, I, I just asked, are we gonna go look at the site? Do you want to? Well, we've done so on, on um, all of the other uh, marijuana facilities. I think we should. We could do it on that same day, the 13th, even the, well, you can come also, Bob, on the 13th to the, to your butter. But uh, since we'll be out and about, we could schedule it for 11 o'clock on the uh, 13th. That's a Saturday. That's the day before Valentine's Day for me. Uh, we're going to be pretty active around the place. So <laughs> it, we might want to schedule a different time if we could. That's okay. <laughs> How about the following week? Fine with me. Twentieth. Uh, now we usually do it at ten o'clock. Ten o'clock on Saturday, the twentieth. Okay for everybody. All right. So what I was going to ask is, how long do you think it'll take uh, the buyer group to? Um, 
put their outer mitigation plan together? Uh, I think I would give them at least a couple of weeks. We can get we can get on the horn with them basically straight away after this uh, meeting. Um, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll talk to them this week then, and I would say within a couple of weeks, um, they'll have the they should have the package together for you. Let me get uh, a firm a, fir a confirmation from them about that estimated wait time, and I'll again, perhaps I can email you or. Uh, or whatnot, um, that information? Yeah, emailing's fine. The question then is, should we schedule it now for four weeks from now, which is the next CBA meeting? Four weeks, a short month, as Bob points out, goes rather quick. Um, if I had to guess, I'm guessing you might not have it by then, but I don't know. We probably will. Um, we probably will. What are you, Bob and Chris, do you have any thoughts on, do you, do you want to schedule it for next month, or do you... Or, or do you have any thoughts on that? Do you think it'd be better to wait? What do you? I think we should get in touch with those folks this week and then put ourselves on the agenda for the, fall, the next upcoming meeting and push push buyers to get our plan together. And then in the meantime, we'll try to locate, again, it may be difficult to locate a facility that's exactly like this one, uh, but we'll do our best to do some research on other facilities that have had success. And, uh, yeah. And, buyers, and also, I wanted to mention buyers might be able to address some of the uh, issues with if climate, different climate, et cetera, affect uh, odor. Is, and also, they we will specifically ask them about that. Um, and, and they might have examples of people that they have worked with in similar climates to this. They have worked with people in, in quite a few different areas. So um, I'll make sure to ask them about that as well. All right. So why don't we put it on for March 4th? Um, I want to say 715, Mary's at work. Oh, we just have the, the one at 640, so yeah, seven. This will and be then, seven. Let me ask you, let's say, ask Sophia directly if by a week before then you don't think you'll have the buyer plan, why don't you let us know and then we won't waste everybody's time? Yep, so absolutely. I will, I will touch base with the client, and as soon as we know that if we have it or not, I will request a respectfully request a continuance if necessary. Excellent. Excellent. So let me just get back to the, the time. It's March 4th, 2021 at 7.15? Correct. Thank you. We, we could, there's no issue with us still attending the planning board meeting on the 9th, right, with this? Oh, no, that's, that's fine. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll definitely see you on the 20th at 10 a.m. And then we'll wait to hear whether uh, you have your buyer's plan, but we'll put you on and you are on the March 4th uh, agenda at 7.15 p.m. Great, well, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thanks everybody, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Next time. Good night. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.